My name is Jay Kiesling, and I'm a synthetic biologist. Synthetic biology is genetic engineering on steroids. We want to do for biology what electrical engineers have done for microelectronics, make it as easy to engineer a biological system as it is to engineer a personal computer or a cell phone. So these are engineered microbes. This started in my laboratory right around 2000, 2001. Uh, we were trying to figure out what we'd work on. One day, one of my graduate students said, Jay, look at this molecule. It's an anti-malarial drug, and it means life and death for a lot of children whose parents can't afford the drugs. And we looked at that, and we thought, gosh, uh, this ought to be something we can produce. This was my first trip to Africa. I went to visit some of these communities where malaria is a huge problem. It was an eye-opener, a complete eye-opener. We do a lot of malaria tests. Like from today, we've done most up, up, up to 50 slides, 50 up to 50 slides. And how many are infected? Almost half of that. Half? That so is for today. today. Almost half of that, wow. yeah. This is an area of Kenya that sits right on a lake, and so there are just mosquitoes everywhere. We went into a clinic. People had stood in line or waited for hours to see the nurse. This one little boy must have been four. His older brother must have been six or seven. And it brought him in because his mother was out working. And uh, it was clear that he was ill. He had a runny nose. He was, uh, even though it was very warm out, he was all bundled up. And uh, the nurse did a very quick analysis of his blood and could detect malaria. So she pulled out the packet of artemisinin tablets and instructed his brother how to give him the tablets. So artemisinin is the drug of choice for treating malaria, and there's really no backup. Right now, we get artemisinin from the plant that produces it naturally. And it's very hard to predict how much artemisinin you're gonna get from the plant. And so as a result, there are these large swings in price and availability. Many of these people are living on less than a dollar per day. Patients go without drugs because they can't afford them. Well, it definitely means life and death. It just emphasized how important it is to have an alternative to producing it in plants. Having a semi-synthetic version of the drug is a good thing. Um, it's a good thing so that we can dampen out the swings in price and availability so you can have a process that will be much less expensive. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation had come into being. And they were investing a lot of money in global health and we were able to convince them that this was a good bet. It was a total game changer. It was a huge amount of money, $42 million, to do both the research as well as some of the aspects on scale-up and commercialization. It was risky, though. I mean, everybody was putting their career on the line. We had to find this critical gene that encoded an enzyme in the pathway. And not only did we find the gene, and not only did it function, it did three steps in the pathway, not just the one we were looking for, but all three steps. There, there aren't many eureka moments in science. It's like, not like in the movies or in cartoons where there's a eureka and things change dramatically. But if I were to classify one eureka moment in the last 20 years, of my scientific career, that would have been it. We were hesitant to celebrate, but now I think we can celebrate. The process works. It's churning out artemisinin. This project took a village to do. We had the University of California to do the basic science. We had Amaris to build an industrial strength microbe we had the Institute for One World Health, which coordinated us and helped us interact with the Gates Foundation. And then we have Sanofi now, 
who licensed the entire process and scaled it up. You want to have drugs available when you need them, and you want them to be fairly priced. And by fair, that's what you can afford to pay. If you have no money and can't get to a clinic because you're too far, you go to a store that sells antimalarials, which may or may not be real drugs. And that's the danger. They may be counterfeit. They may have some level of artemisinin or antimalarial active ingredient in it or not enough. And then, of course, that gives rise to resistance, which is what we're trying to avoid. The reason that Zagaya exists is that we felt very strongly that the technology that's being used to produce semi-synthetic artemisinin should be more widely available. So our role is actually sharing and facilitating folks to use the technology. So we work really hard at finding the right partners, folks who really firmly believe that drug needs to get to patients at the lowest possible cost. Zagaya's mission is to get other companies involved in producing artemisinin. And gosh, if we could somehow get multiple manufacturers to work together. That would just be a win-win for everyone. I think everybody that's involved with the Semi-Synthetic Project really, truly believes that we can ensure everyone who gets sick with malaria, and that's a lot of people, have the ability to be treated with a drug that's not gonna cost them, you know, half a year's salary. At the end of the day, that's the bottom line. The best part is yet to come, which is, you know, when we go back to the clinics and actually watch our material curing people in three days from malaria, you know, something that could kill you. I think what was magic about Jay was right in the beginning, he had a strategy that would take him from uh, his laboratory work to something that would really impact society. And this required improvements in processes by many orders of magnitude. And he just proceeded in a very careful and very systematic way with benchmarks every few months. And he met those benchmarks. It's extraordinary. I see. When Melinda Gates first said what's known as the E-word, eradication, she offered a very persuasive argument, which is if we aim at anything less, then we value certain lives less than we value. Sorry, less than we value our own kids' lives. I think our cause is a very noble cause. I think it's something that is really important for the world community to do. Um, and we are going to need help, a lot of help.